Hello. It's good to see you again. I thought we'd do something fun today. Today we're going to do a little drawing. And since the Star Wars movie has come out, I thought it would be a lot of fun if we did a Star Wars drawing of Kylo Ren. Maybe a, a little bit of fun could be had with that character. He's a really interesting character. So why don't we go ahead and get to that? Of course, what I need first of all, and most importantly, is my sketchbook. Can't get very far without that. Find a blank page here. Now, we're going to do something a little different today. Uh, I'm going to begin drawing the pencil sketch. And once I finish the pencil sketch, we're going to switch the camera around so you can see the drawing as it's being made. We're going to go ahead and keep it on my silly face right here at the beginning because you can't really see the pencil sketch anyway. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I absolutely loved the last Star Wars movie, The Force Awakens. Um, it was just an absolute blast, had incredible characters, and a really interesting part of that was Kylo Ren. Um, now, when you're doing a drawing that has lettering, one of the things that I learned is that lettering comes first. You might do a little bit of a sketch to kind of get a feel for where things are going to be, but ultimately, it is the lettering that has to come first. Otherwise, you're going to have problems. So I'm going to have the uh, quick sketch in here. I was originally going to have that say sun, but uh, I think it'd be more interesting if it said bin, because, of course, we know that... By the way, if you haven't seen the newest Star Wars movie, massive spoilers for this, you have been warned. Uh, that Kylo Ren's original name was Ben. Um, we're going to have a little uh, statement here from his father. Sending to that romantic One of the great things that all parents do is they say the name of the thing the child cares about wrong. It's just required. And so we're going to have Han Solo off screen, as it were, ask about romantic chemical instead of my chemical romance. have Kylo Ren respond in a most upset manner. He's going to make reference to his grandfather. I'm sorry for the silence, but the truth is I can do many things simultaneously, but I can't write text and talk at the same time. It's just almost impossible for me. But see, now I've got the lettering kind of basically blocked in. Of course, I'm going to ink it in a little bit, but first we're going to uh, work on the placement of Kylo Ren. Now, uh, I know that the last drawing I did was sitting, a character sitting on their bed, and I, I assure you that I, I'm not obsessed with having characters sitting on their bed, but um, I think that if you have an emo character that it's simply 
there's just something about the moping on their bed that is so typical of a uh, of a teenage child. Now, again, we're not worried about continuity or anything silly like that. Uh, this is um, just for fun, because obviously the real Kylo Ren would not be in his evil Kylo Ren outfit uh, just yet. Let me see here. Now, one of the things that people sometimes stress about is not being able to get, you know, details right. Well, first of all, drawing should always be fun. You should always draw ultimately for your own enjoyment, and you shouldn't let whether or not you can get every little detail correct stop you from having a good time. But also, there's absolutely nothing wrong with getting reference, and that's what I've got over here on my iPad is just a picture of Kylo Ren's mask so that I can at least get a a general approximation. I mean, he's got this this large mouth guard at the bottom that is reminiscent of Darth Vader, of course. Um, and I'm going to play with his face mask as if it was scrunching to make uh, that angry teen face. And we're going to kind of work that in there. And then he's got these little, uh, for lack of a better term, doodads uh, on his faceplate uh, that are kind of interesting. And we're going to try to work in a little bit of those. That'll be fun. I've actually been playing with trying to get the... Um, trying to get the Kylo Ren... Um voice right for my voice recordings, but the I'm not quite there yet. I don't quite have it right. Uh, he actually has a deeper voice with his modulated voice than Darth Vader, but um, the funny thing is is that uh, his has a little bit of burr to it. It's, it's a, like a distortion. Darth Vader's was deep, of course, and it was echoey, but it was not um, it was not really distorted, whereas Kylo Ren has a very slight distortion, but when I was trying to recreate it, <laughs> it, it was close, but it was ending up sounding a little bit more like a Transformer <laughs> than Kylo Ren. So I'm going to add a little, uh, he's got his little dresser here near his bed. And uh, I'm going to put that on the bed here. And he's going to have his little belt on because Kylo Ren has a big thick belt. So we're definitely going to give him that. We're going to see how we can do with um, the coloring later because when you have a character who is essentially all black. I mean, obviously there's a little bit of color here and there, but essentially his uh, costume is all black. Um, you have to really work with the light and with the colors and with the grays because um, otherwise it uh, just, he just looks like a big blob. <laughs> is what happens. He just sort of looks like a big blob. Now, I would love you to put in the comments of uh, when was the first time that you watched Star Wars. I know that the, the first time that I watched Star Wars, I was sitting in my mother's lap during the original 1977 Star Wars. And uh, I actually fell asleep on my mother's lap, and that will give you some indication of how young I was at the time, but I was just barely, uh, I have two older brothers, and they uh, they were the main reason my parents went. I, I think if it had just been me, they probably wouldn't have taken me to uh, go see that. Let's see, now Kylo's got some boots here, so we definitely need to show off those boots, but this, see, this is a perfect reason why you put the lettering in first is because most of his boots are going to be 
covered by his thought balloon, his uh, speech balloon. And uh, that is why you want to put those letters in first, because now I, I don't have to put all that effort into drawing uh, that. Let's see here. Make sure I have his thought balloons. Now, one of the things they taught me when I was learning how to draw is try not to have tangents. And that's where two lines just touch like that. They just touch. It, um, what the brain does is it tries to merge the two together. And um, it'd be kind of fun if he had like a spaceport in his room, like maybe if like his room was almost like a spaceship. I think that'd be kind of fun. We'll do that. Hopefully it won't be too confusing. We'll draw some stars out there for later. It may look kind of weird. But this is a good point about the tangents. I was talking about the speech uh, balloon tails. Every once in a while I, I mess up and I do that. It makes me mad. But um, Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to see, I've got these uh, chisel tip pens, and I'm not quite as adept at lettering with these as other kinds, but we're going to give it a shot, because I, when you do a good job lettering with these, it's really interesting. It has a really interesting quality to it because of the chisel tip. And I'm not going to worry about being super precise. After I do this, I'm going to flip it around because you're going to start to see the picture begin to come into focus. So I sure hope I'm spelling this right. One of the things you find out when you start lettering is that the part of your brain that does drawing is actually more engaged when you're doing lettering than the part of your brain that does writing. And so sometimes you will have these really interesting misspellings if you're not paying attention to what you're doing uh, because your brain is more thinking about it as a drawing than as a lettering. And that's why sometimes if you've ever drawn on like a big whiteboard or like a poster board, like something that you didn't have any trouble spelling whatsoever. You suddenly spell, especially like you flip two words. That's what that is. That's actually your brain trying to draw it instead of write it. This is such a, I really like the Kyle Wren character in that he's so angry. He's, it, it, I really get the impression that they're trying to make him older than he's coming across. Uh, I, I don't know. You can certainly tell me your uh, feelings as far as that, about how old you think Kylo Ren is supposed to be in The Force Awakens. But I think that he's actually supposed to be a little bit older than he's coming across, because he almost comes across as like a teenager. But I think he's supposed to be in at least uh, his mid-twenties. Maybe even as old as 30. Because that would be a little more consistent with the timeline from Return of the Jedi. Okay, I think I've got most of the letters done in. So what I'm going to do is we're going to flip this around. And then we're going to let you watch. All right? All right. So here is the drawing. And you can see why I didn't bother to uh, show you it before. Because it's really hard to make out the pencil drawing. But as we do in the inking, uh, you will definitely be able to make out a lot more. And we get to the coloring. Now, what I, again, the most important thing to put in first is the lettering. Because if you don't, you're going to end up in a lot of trouble. Uh, what I'm going to do is just do a freehand word balloon. Just try to do it carefully, but I'm not going to concern myself with getting the word balloon perfect. I'm just going to get a nice free flow. And I'm going to have this word balloon go off panel 
implying that this is coming from outside the room. And sometimes I add a little beep, 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 beep to kind of imply that. And he's going to be angry, so we're going to add a jaggedy word balloon here to Kylo Ren. Also, I found that while I do have in the pencil at a curve, if you really want to have an angry word balloon, draw it at a straight line. That straight line kind of implies a little more force. And here we go. There we go. Very good. And now this is going to be again more of a like under his breath. Now if I was really trying to be fancy, I might draw it with little hashes to show that it's a whisper, but my experience has been, unless you're really, really good, a lot of times those hashes, they just don't look right. So I'm not gonna bother with that, I'm just gonna fill that in. So now I've got all of the lettering put in, and that will really help a lot. And now we're going to start in general, it is a good idea, as I've mentioned before, to put in the foreground objects first. The foreground objects really help define the thing. And it's, it's also just easier. <laughs> it's a lot easier to ink in the foreground than it is to try and ink in the things behind it, and then figure out what is foreground and background. And we're having a little fun with anatomy here today, because we're not going to get too worked up with exactly Kylo Ren's physicality. I know that the big rumor before the movie came out was that Luke Skywalker was Kylo Ren, and I could definitely tell that, that was not the case. Not because of any amazing insight, simply because <laughs> the uh, actor playing Kylo Ren was far too thin to be Luke Skywalker. Now, I believe that Mark Hamill lost a lot of weight for the role, but, but uh, there is simply... Uh, certain things that a 66-year-old man does not look like, and whip thin is usually one of them. They usually just do not look like that as someone who is uh, not 66, but not a spring chicken anymore. <laughs> I can definitely speak to the fact that that is the case. Uh, we're going to try to get his cape in a little bit. He actually has a little forward kind of roll to his cape, and I'm going to try to indicate that. One of the best things you can do to show volume on a character is the second line right here, like this. That right there. Because what that does better than anything is it implies the scale, uh, the depth to an object. I'm going to try to get his... See, I'm, I'm fudging the uh, face mask a little bit so that it looks angry. You know, this, I believe, his face mask is already meant to imply that, but we're exaggerating it a little bit for the purpose of this drawing. Now he got his little doodads here. I'm not going to worry about getting them just right. I'm just going to kind of put a little bit in there to kind of imply that. Here's his, the rest of his cloak. He's got his big spooky cloak. Such an interesting character who so desperately wants to be like his grandfather. And so much is not. I'm just taking a peek at the mask to kind of see how those lines end. They kind of come to a little, not point, but they come to an end like that. And... Uh, Really, this should come out a little bit further. We're not going to worry about that. That's fine. We're going to have his legs sticking out from his cape here. And this is why it's important to sketch in his boots, even though most of them are going to be covered, so I at least have some indication of where 
that leg is supposed to be. He's got his legs together there. He's just in a super emo state. Now again, I am fully aware that, of course, Kylo Ren was not dressed as Kylo Ren when he was living with Han Solo and Leia. But we're just having a little, little fun with that. Much in the same way as they sometimes draw Darth Vader as Luke and Leia's dad. Like in domestic affairs, we're just, uh, we're just having a little fun with that. Get his bed sketched in here. Just kind of imply a few lines there. And just a little bit right there. This dresser. Boop. This is going to be a pretty basic dresser. And the main reason that I'm putting in the dresser is so I have an excuse to put his lightsaber. I don't know how you felt about the extra pronged lightsaber, but I. I liked it quite a bit. I also think it fit the character because he he's kind of trying too hard. <laughs> if you see what I mean. I think I got that now. I can turn that off. I also like to put these little lines in when someone's shouting sometimes. Let's see if I can get this porthole to actually look like a porthole. I don't know if I'll succeed or not. We shall see. Good thing is to draw kind of a semicircle on the other side. That sort of helps imply depth. There. That's the edge of his room. Go that right up to the top. And that will do for now. Well, I just need a little bit more definition on his neck. That will do for now for the inking. Fun part. Go in and erase everything. I say the fun part, but really the fun part is getting to the inking, uh, coloring. And you'll notice that there are some places missing on the inking, and that's okay. One, um, it actually there are there are actually times where it's good to leave some spaces because that helps fill in the blank with the mind. The other is that if you're going to color, uh, you're going to fill in some of those. I'm just going to pull this up for a second. Sweep that off. Make sure and clean that up later. Made a nice little mess on the floor there. Okay. This is pretty rare right there. Sometimes you do get little smudges like that. Uh, this is not my favorite kind of eraser, but it's what I had. So you do what you can. All right, I think we've, I think we've got that pretty well there. Now, let's get to Really fun part. That is color. Now, Kylo Ren is essentially all black. <laughs> so if, again, I tried to draw him all black, it's going to look like a blob. He's going to look like a giant blob. So we're going to try and do some different interesting things to circumvent that. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of color. You'll notice this isn't too much color because it's supposed to be his bed. This is called brick white. And uh, that's probably not even showing up too much on the camera, but that's okay. Because uh, I'm going to go in there with the grays in a little bit and get a little more definition to that. For his bed. Okay, that is my 
blender. I don't want to use that. For his bed, I would like to give him a little more color. Thinking maybe a pencil might be the way to go. Let's try a yellow in there. Kind of color that in. Now, obviously, the opposite of black is white, but if we just have black and white, it's going to be kind of boring. <laughs> so, we don't want to do that. I'm going to add a little brown. Here, change the direction. I also kind of like the idea that he might have like tiles on his floor. So I'm just going to draw some lines in there and kind of fill those in. Also, it could sort of look like. Uh, Would if I did it in a different color, but I'm not. I kind of stay loosey goosey with whether or not I'm doing markers or pencil, just kind of as the mood takes me. Let's see, let's leave little places here. So, and then we're going to fill that in. Do, 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 do. Very nice. I'm going to leave a few organic whites in there. There also may be some other options that I can try in just a minute to add some Starfield in there. Let's see if I have that available. I've got this uh, painter's. It's basically paint. Uh, I don't use it too often, but I find that it's really nice for putting in star fields like this. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Got a nice kind of star field there. And I don't want to draw the edge of this black, so I'm going to make that just kind of gray. to make this background. This is light peach. I don't want to really use that because that's more of a skin color. Um, this sand is kind of an interesting one. I've actually used this as a skin color before. But it's, it's a little dark for, you know, boring Caucasian skin color, but I think we can kind of have some fun with it here. We're just going to kind of sketch it in a little bit. Something that I've noticed, sometimes I use a little too much brown in my drawings. It's uh, tempting because it, it's a nice color, but unfortunately it can kind of blend in like I've done with the table here. Give the background a little more depth, a little more interestingness than it would have otherwise. What I'm going to do is get a slightly darker brown and kind of work in some of the edges here. Give them a little definition. Nothing too fancy, but just kind of imply a little more depth. With some of these here. Maybe around the bed. 
be really interested to see where they go with this character. He's clearly going to be the most interesting villain that will obviously introduce new villains in the next movie. But where they'll go with that, none can say. Now, the question is, what of Kylo Ren do I make black? Do I make totally and utterly black? Now, his lower face shield is very, very black. It's less like a solid black. So I think that sort of makes sense to do. But I'm leaving a little bit of an edge there. Just like I did with the portcullis or the porthole. I'm going to add a very dark gray for this edge. I want kind of a lighter gray for his seeing area. I'm going to sketch that a little, uh, ink that a little bit. Let me get later. Take this brick white and use that to kind of color in this little band that he has here. Apply that a little bit. Other grades. There we go. This is a very dark gray. Yeah, this is basically black. What we want to do is we want to work in little pools of white. Otherwise, we will get that absolute. Now, the light is falling on his cape, on his hood, then it will leave little bits of white in it. So we're going to leave those there. Kind of give it a little bit of rim lighting and I'm going to ink some of that in a little bit later. Poor Kylo. He is the most emo of villains. He had a really rough life, you know, except that he had loving parents who gave him everything he wanted, and he went to the dark side and murdered a bunch of Jedi apprentices. You know, but other than that, his life has been pretty good. It's also good to leave a little space where you have kind of joints, because otherwise it's another place where things can really run together. But I do like more so on the bottom to make it complete because that, that implies more of a shadow going down there. There we go. Now, as a voice actor, I've done a lot of Darth Vader impressions, in fact, on Fiverr. I've made it a, a fun little side hobby that I do Darth Vader impressions for birthday wishes. And there's just something about Darth Vader. I do a lot of impressions on there, but by far, by far, Darth Vader is my most popular one. And there's just something so iconic about Darth Vader. And that I really like the design of Kylo Ren because it, it just really evokes the feeling of a young man who is trying so hard to be bad. He's trying so hard to be evil. And he's just not quite there. <laughs> just not quite evil as he would like to be. But he is trying his darndest to be evil. I'm going to try a little bit of the Sharpie. I don't usually use the Sharpie, but when I'm, when I'm just doing pure blacks, it's actually pretty darn useful for that. If I'm not worried about 
the main problem that you can have with the Sharpie is that sometimes it will bleed a little bit. And that is not good. You do not want things bleeding. But you're just filling in big black places. The Sharpie may be the tool for you. And it is way cheaper than Copic markers with the prism, prism, prism colors. I can never remember what those are called. Markers. So, when you have a character like this who is Blacky McBlack, all in black there, that is a good option. Now, This is the part that makes me feel like a comic book artist, even though I'm not, <laughs> even a little bit. Just pulling out my technical pens, and I'm going to add just a little bit of shading, a little cross hatching where his feet are, where the bed is. Can have a little fun with that. I've seen some just amazing cross hatching from professional artists that I cannot even touch, but I still do like giving it a little bit of extra texture with uh, just some a few sketchy lines, gives it a little bit more reality. And I'm going to get the really thin one. That is the. Uh, 0 0.0051 one there. That is some seriously thin line. And kind of work in some lines in his costume. And what it can do is sort of imply the bridge between darkness and light. If you can get it right, which I certainly do not always. But I, uh, I like to add a little bit here and there. I heard someone say once that uh, it always, it never looks right. Uh, it never sounds right if you tell the joke of a comic out loud. And I'm, I have no doubt that there is probably truth to that. But of course, the, the entire joke of this is that this is emo Kylo Ren, and he's living at home with his parents. He's super bummed to be there because he wants to be all dark side, but his parents don't understand him. And his father is saying, Ben, are you listening to that romantic chemical again? Of course, not understanding that it's my chemical romance. And he's saying, no, geez, dad, I wish grandpa was here. Stupid light side, me. Okay, he didn't say me, but I thought maybe I'd add that in. I see that I've left a little bit of pencil on the word balloon, so I'm just going to work that out real quick. There we go. Working that out. Good. Alright, now I'm just going to move the camera a little bit so you can get a full shot of this. And if you let's see if I can show all of that. If you would like the original, you can leave a message in the comments. And the first person who requests it, I will be happy to send it to you if you're in the United States. Sorry, outside the United States, it's just too expensive. So I hope you enjoyed The Force Awakens. I hope you like my silly little drawing. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.